Fred, this belongs to you, I think. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, whoever's responsible for this, thank you so much. Uh, uh, the Lord's still working with me to, to be a teacher, so uh, we'll have to keep on. I'm going to put this down here right now, but thank you so much for that. It, uh, time to shine. Listen, listen, the, the convention just talked about this, so. <laughs> it's my mic now. <laughs> hey guys, they're all in on it, of course. Uh, I happened to be in a resale shop and ran into this cup, and I thought about you. Best teacher ever. Teacher, teacher, I declare. You're the best anywhere. And all these folks, they agreed with me. And uh, we wanted to present you with a little something this morning, but first I want to talk about you. So uh, anyway, how blessed we are to have this guy. The only thing I don't like about him, occasionally I sneak out, I think I'm sneaking out the door to get in my car. I have to go home for some reason. Maybe I'm sleepy, I don't know. but. Anyway, it's all about Paul today, and I hear this voice. Where are you going, Sharon? <laughs> oh, boy. It's him, so sneaking out. But, you know, Paul, we do appreciate how you work all week to bring us a great lesson. You pour your life into it, and it says the teacher is wise, and he teaches his students. The Bible says that, and it teaches his students to be wise. I don't know about y'all, but I am a tad bit wiser because of Paul. <laughs> Just a tad. I hadn't been in here as long as I should. But anyway, we really appreciate you. And I thought it was funny that last week, uh, which this had already been taken care of, that uh, he mentioned the best place he liked to eat. And it happened to be Taste of Texas. And so he said he only got to go one time a year. And so now you get to go two times a year. This year, you'll be buying one, and we'll take care of the other. But here's a card signed by the people that love you, and uh, movie cards, and Taste of Texas. Oh, my We're so blessed. Huh. I'll set this down here so it'll be out of your way. We'll leave that up there. Don't cry. <laughs> I'm not the best at receiving accolades like that, and uh, I know what how Fred feels. And uh, but thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. The heritage of faith, <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God for whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you even as I recall your tears so that I may be filled with joy. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois, your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. Paul's relationship with Timothy shows how God brings along special people through our lives to, to develop our own spiritual walk with God through the years. Timothy had the blessing of his faithful mother and grandmother. Paul, on his first missionary, led Timothy to Christ. And on his second missionary journey, he asked Timothy to join him in his work, in his ministry 
throughout that area. In, in Acts chapter 20, verses 36 through 38, Paul says this. Paul is, is, is telling the church of Ephesus goodbye. He's telling the people goodbye. You won't see me anymore. Because he was on his way to Rome to be martyred for Christ. In verse 36, he said, When he, Paul, had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they began to weep aloud. And embraced Paul and repeatedly kissed him, grieving especially over the word which he had spoken, that they would not see his face again, and they were accompanying him to the ship. Timothy was in tears the last time Paul saw him. And this tells you something about the relationship Paul and Timothy had. Who Paul came along beside Timothy and walked with him, teaching him the gospel, showing him how to, how, to, how, to, to, how to serve the Lord. Now, how has your heritage impacted your faith? That's the question of the lesson in, the, in this, this week. Now, we're going to do something totally different here this morning. But you, you had a little handout. I hope you saw a little handout there. Now, it, it's your turn because this lesson is going to be a whole lot shorter if you don't talk. Now, I, listen, I want you to, uh, some of you say I, I'm loud enough, but you're not. We can't hear well. And so I, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to speak as many as will. And I want you to, to use this microphone. I want you to speak right into that microphone. Don't be afraid of that thing. It's not going to bite. I want you to, to speak right into it where we can hear you. Now, we're going to start with who in your life has passed on their spiritual heritage to you. Well, I'm going to tell you briefly. <clears throat> of course, my mother was the first one. And you've heard me talk about my mom many times, and, and she was the first one. But there's been, uh, been more. Uh, <clears throat> as Ernest will tell you, sometimes we as teenagers, we're not too bright. And we don't follow the Lord the way we should. And... Uh, when we first moved, Glenda and I first moved to, to Pasadena, we were, uh, we were young and we were stupid. And we went, decided one day, look, we got to go to a church somewhere. So we found Southmore Baptist Church on Southmore Street over there. And we walked up to that door and two men, Dwayne Mills, and L.E. Sanford, just two guys standing at the door to welcome people in. They, they scooped Glendine and I up, and for the next two years, just poured their lives into us. Mm-hmm. Now, before those guys died, I had the opportunity to write them a letter and tell them how much that meant to us. I'll always remember Dwayne Mills and Ellie Sanford. They showed me what it was like to serve God. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. (laughs) All right. Because they were simply modeling what what a servant of Christ does. I mean, we didn't didn't have a place to go. We had no thing to do. We had no air conditioning. And when we invited to their home, they had air conditioning. Man, that was good. Now, so I I want to ask you now, uh, who in your life has passed on their spiritual heritage to you? So that's the next question. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share another one here later, but uh, right now, now I want, I want a number of you to speak to that. Who in your life? And if, and if need be, tell us a little story about it. All right. Who wants to go first? Come on, somebody. Here's Darlene. <laughs> Who in your life has passed on their spiritual heritage to you? It's my grandmother. Amen. We live. I lived with her until I was nine years old before Mother and Daddy bought their own house. I can remember her sitting at the 
kitchen table reading her Bible. Now, not so much in words, but in her actions. She had funny little sayings all, all in her life. And she went out. as big as a football field all by herself and I'm a <laughs> <laughs> all right to uh, me all right thank you so much on and a grandmother uh, that's what one of Timothy's wasn't it it was uh Paul yes what you know you got to sing all right Drenda Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on either. All right, who's next? Someone, uh, Wayne? Test, test, test. Test, test. That's okay. My mom and dad were... Uh, test, one, two. They were always involved in church, and uh, and uh, both were with the training. Test, test. What in the world? Amen. <clears throat> All right. All right. Yes, S.W. Good morning. Do I have to stand up? No. We can hear you. I just want to say that James Simmons turned my life around. Amen. And uh, every time I saw James here at this church, he had a few words, kind words for me, and kept me headed in the right direction. And this church was very fortunate to have him here Amen. all the years that we had him, and I had at least for us to lose him. Amen. Thank you, S. Debbie. We'd agree with that. Yes, guy. Let me get that. <laughs> Mine's a little bit different, probably. Uh, was mentored by years. But I want to share a little story with you about my granddad. Named James Livingston Ford. And uh, he lived in our house sometimes. Sometimes he'd live in one of his daughter's houses. But... When, when I would go, he made a real impression on my life because he carried a little doctor's bag with him. He wasn't a doctor. He was a, he, he was a uh, accountant, which is just about as bad. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he carried a little doctor's bag with him. And when he would come into our house, he would set it by his easy chair, and he would tell the grandkids, whatever you do, don't touch this bag. <laughs> and we would all say, okay, Grandpa. In that bag, he had Also in that bag, 
he had his 38 pistol. <laughs> that bag with him wherever he went. Because he was born in the late 1800s. And so that always made an impression on me, on him. He not only had his Bible there to witness the people with, but he also had his Bible there to straighten some people. Anyway, that was kind of my little story. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, God. I mean, came back out and I met the best that it ever happened. Much. I I am a follower of Christ. Today I know. Amen. All right, come on out. Yeah. Uh, can y'all hear me? Hey. My grandmother, uh, Golda Moore, who, uh, from the littlest, the youngest, I mean. Tenant George had raised his hand. Uh. <laughs> okay. Kiss that thing. <laughs> got it. I got it. Okay. Um, who in your life who in who in your life has passed on their spiritual heritage to you um little little story here uh i graduated uh, university of houston in 1960 and uh i had a job already and i wound up in um, el segundo california yeah, boy, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> what did I, little, little did I know what I was getting into, okay? <laughs> but um, anyhow, I, I just did not. We're not able to hear that, Danny, so uh, I'm sorry that, that uh, something is... Test, test. Test, test. Yeah, that'd be good. You, you, you want to come up and talk talk here? I mean, you can talk right into this thing. Make it up there. That one. Just talk right into that thing. Right there. It better work. Yeah, it'll work, I think. So. 
Better work. They can't hear anyway, George. They're talking loud. Oh, uh, test, test. Oh, uh, is that loud enough? Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Anyhow, who in, who in your life has passed on their spiritual heritage to you? Well, as I came out of a, a college uh, and found, found myself in uh, El Segundo, California, um, that there was, there was hardly anybody around me that uh, I knew or, or talked to or whatever. And, uh, but I remember the, the one, one, one day, Daddy, see, Daddy, Daddy drove, drove in with me uh, to El Segundo. And then we were, I, we, I, we, we were, we were in a little place in, in El Segundo. So we were going, but we were going to go to church um, uh, in Seg El Segundo because with my dad. And, and um, interesting, interesting thing happened. Um, uh, we, we, we both together went in and, um, and uh, just uh, walked in and all of a sudden uh, it, it was quiet, totally quiet. Nobody said hello, nobody said anything. And I just, he and I just went in and sat down and, and, and went through the service. But I, the, 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 the thing about El Segundo and my, I'm gonna, it, it, it really was a troublesome kind of, kind of a thing, and, and, and uh, I, I, it bothered me, and, and, it, and it led me, my, my mind, to think, well, why did I come out here, you know? I mean, what, what, was, what was that all about? Well, in the next two or three days or, or so, <coughs> I got uh, a, a word um, that, uh, uh, she, my mother, see, the moms are good, all of them, I guarantee you, and she, she, when, when I was, she, oh, i tell you what it was, they have one, uh, one uh, a, a place in El Segundo, and, 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 and they have, what do you, what do you call those places that they have that, they, you, you, that, uh, let's see, I, I can't remember you know, how that went, but, Here's how that worked out. I'm going to say that that there was a, a group of people in um, in uh, California, close to El Segundo, and uh, they they rep and I and and they and I, and I told my mother I said I'm just uh, un uncomfortable in in this and uh, uh, I don't know how this is going to come out, but then time time moved on, and lo and behold. In that little group of people in another place, they they <coughs> they they um, uh, they they came. Oh, I, I know what it was. I remember. They one afternoon on a, on Sunday, there was a, and I knew good and well that was the pastor at El Segundo. I, it just it just struck me. And, and I thought, and I, to me, as that went on, I, it, I, I was totally con convinced that the Lord just led me that, in that direction. Uh -huh. and, 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 and so uh, things began. Uh, he, well, and the pastor came one afternoon, and, and, and there, and I said, and I, 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 it makes a difference. I, it, yeah. it does. It yeah. does. It. And and so he knocked he knocked on the door. I came in. Uh, I spoke with him, and uh, uh, he uh, he invited me. I, I said, "Look, I can't even find the church in El Segundo." And I said, "I did. I said it just just about like that because I was getting tired. I mean, I was almost running out of gas, so, so to speak, because I wasn't doing any. Didn't think I was doing any good. But uh, but okay." We, we, we uh, mother, mother, mother went to uh, the head of that group that was in El Segundo as well, and and um, that the that group of people uh, got me uh, uh, into the church, and I went into the church uh, in uh, in um, 
in El Segundo. And um, uh, I told them, I said, uh, uh, they, uh, I'll, be, I'll be there. And, and, uh, and uh, they, they wanted to know who, who it, the church was about uh, 15 people, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, and anyhow, I, so I, I went to the church and uh, they, uh, they introduced me, it introduced uh, uh, me, me to those that were there in, in that little 15, 15, there wasn't any more than 15 people. And by the way, but here's a here's another interesting thing. They um, uh, they they out of the 15 people or so, maybe maybe 20. Um, I was getting I was developing a a, a positive th thought here because um, every every one of the people that uh, that uh, spoke about who who they were and where, where they were from were either Oklahoma or Texas. <laughs> pretty pretty good change, really. <laughs> that, like that, that, yeah, I couldn't 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 do it. But anyhow, that led that led me to end. Uh, I, I joined joined the church. And then I went uh, went in, and, and I, once again, well, first of all, I, I, the pastor wanted me to do some preaching, not preaching, but talking, yeah, talking. And uh, so, I, so uh, I'm talking way too much. I don't know. Oh, I got a whole bunch of people here, um, but anyhow, I'm, I got to get get that, this thing is. Yeah. Now, just that first one, Joe. All right. Now, when when in your life has passed? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. that that's the first one that he's talking about. Just the one there. But but George, it sounds much like uh, a number of you. There's always someone that come along beside you, and yes. it was a God thing that George wound up in that church. Yep. Because yeah. there was a group of people yeah. there that that knew what a Texan sounded like. Yeah. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so so true. <laughs> so right, true. George, thank you so again. true. Yes, Danny. So. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. So you did right. good, George. Right. Yes, Danny. Well, Brother Paul, I, I've looked this thing over, and uh, who passed the spiritual heritage to you? <clears throat> it has to be my. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, it has to be my dad with the spiritual influence, uh, E.R. Hardy, Jr., Ursel Raymond Hardy, Jr. <laughs> he said it wouldn't be any more uh, seconds, thirds, whatever, because they was always getting the mail wrong, you know. But uh, he was the, the spiritual influence, really, in the whole family. And I'm trying to pass uh, that heritage off to my daughter, to my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. My great-grandchild's son, the first one I had. Uh, how many do we have, Faye? Seven? <laughs> anyway, uh, he just got, he's six years old, he's got some kind of little cell phone, and we're talking backwards and forwards, great-granddaddy and him, about things, you know, and uh, we're it's, it's a good thing. And whose influence was brought to this place? Uh, Faye and I were looking for a place where we could learn about the Lord's, about the Lord, everything in the Bible. And we found our way here. Uh, Faye didn't even know Brother Ernest was here. She's from San Antonio, got saved under his ministry up there. And his influence has been tremendous on me and Mr. Bill Harper. Amen. I watched that man, I don't know how many years in here, and he asked me to help take this over. And then uh, Floyd Rogers, when I was 12 years old, he was a preacher that came to do a revival. He was probably 70 years old at that time 
And at 12 years old, I walked out and got saved. And as the years went by, I met up with him again up in Lexington, Tennessee, and he had gone blind. He was probably 85 years old, and he would get up in that pulpit, no Bible in his hand, and he would just say, go to verse, chapter, verse, so-and-so, and it says this, and, it's, and he'd read it out word by word. New Testament, Old Testament, didn't know, matter where it was at. And we stayed in touch for about another 10 years, and he finally passed. So he is, uh, was special in my life, and I think that was pretty much the yeah, end yeah, of what I was doing. Yeah, that's that's first one is so amazing. he was the one that helped me turn my life around. He really did. Thank All you, right. Danny. <laughs> All right, folks, we're about out of time, but, but I'm going to tell you, it, it, it goes without saying, every one of you, I'm, I'm going to embarrass him, I'm pretty sure, but every one of you have learned from this guy sitting right over here. And uh, I, I was, best I remember, I was 37 years old when Ernest came here. And Ernest modeled what it's like to be a, a pastor and a, and a servant of God. And he, he, didn't, he didn't ask us, uh, okay, you're coming with me this afternoon, Sunday afternoon, we're going to go make some calls. And, and we learned from him. And uh, to that day, I still remember all those times. Now, now we can't necessarily just go knocking on doors. We might get reported or something, but... Uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, we, we owe Ernest a, a great uh, deal in our heritage of faith right now. And so, and of course, I, uh, I, it, it goes without mentioning uh, Hal Pettigrew to me. Uh, been my friend forever, and, and uh, quite frankly, I didn't want to be Hal's friend. I, you know, he was a minister, and I was a draftsman, so it didn't, it, they didn't match. And so, but I finally became his friend, and, and still his dear friend, and... Uh, and he's such a great guy and, and uh, such a, uh, still a, a disciple of Christ himself. And so I want to say a word from my friend Paul Murphy, who's watching somewhere in North Carolina. And because uh, Paul and I were running buddies at Southmore Baptist Church, and uh, we didn't get started good till they asked us to take over training union. We asked, what is training union? And we didn't know what we were doing, but uh, we said, sounds good to us. <laughs> so anyway, there's been a lot of people that's impacted our lives here. And I'm, I'm sorry that we couldn't get to every one of you because uh, we, we may do this again sometime because I think it's interesting to know who has impacted your life. And, and we all know those grandmothers and those mothers. Oh, uh, the world would be different without them. And so... Lord, we just thank you, God, that you're uh, still watching over us. You're still providing people in our lives at this age to guide and direct us in the path of righteousness. Lord, we thank you for that. We pray, God, that uh, until we draw our last breath, we'll serve you in some way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, folks. Man, struck it rich here today, man. Man, I don't know either. Danny, but... Oh, man. I spent my summers in East Texas with my grandmother. I still have a postcard I wrote home to mom here in Deer Park. The Baptist church burned down and Momo cried. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, it, it, it's, it's strong, though, Jack. It, it was strong heritage there. Oh, yeah. And it still is strong. With uh, if our, Of course, strong. our mothers have gone on, our grandmothers have gone on, but, man, they had a great impact. And they didn't mind calling it like it was. <laughs> I still remember Mama's first job she ever had.